Welcome to English Practice Stories. Hello, my dear friends. How are you? Let's start the story. So every morning, my husband would wake up early and cook breakfast for us and our two kids. It was usually eggs and bacon with some toast, biscuits, or pancakes. We recently moved into a new three-bedroom apartment in a much older part of the city, with this beautiful dark wood furniture already in it. Since it was real wood, the lady renting it out decided it would be too heavy to be worth selling. Well, ever since, my husband seemed to have picked up a strange habit. He's always been a bit lazy with cleaning up after cooking, so I'd always have to take the used eggshells out of the carton and throw them away for him. After we moved into the new place, I was proud of him. There'd never be eggshells in the carton, so I assumed he'd taken the chance amid all the chaos to fix a few of his bad habits. Well, Q1 random Tuesday morning. It was a work holiday at my office, but everyone else was out of the house. I decided to sweep and dust the place thoroughly, which we hadn't done since we'd moved in a month or so prior. I found a lot of dust bunnies and some coins and knickknacks, but by far the strangest thing I found was when I got to the wardrobe in our bedroom. It stood about four inches, ten centimeters, I think, off the ground on hand-carved clawed feet. When I peered under it, there was a lot of dust and spider webs, but behind it were eggshells. Admittedly, I jumped a little when I first saw them, but I pretty quickly realized, well, assumed, that they were just regular eggshells. Maybe seven or eight. I swept them out from under the wardrobe and threw them away. I figured they were from the previous owner, though I was thoroughly confused by why they'd be there in all places. I cleaned again the next weekend. This time, I found eggshells under the couch. Pale white, slightly bigger, and slightly slimy. They must have been recent. That, and the fact I'd cleaned under the couch last time, ruled out the previous tenants as a source of the shells. I still wasn't sure if I wanted to bring it up with my husband. It seemed too strange of a thing to do intentionally, so I racked my brain for other explanations. Maybe they got knocked under there unintentionally. But how would that happen half a dozen times? Maybe they got dragged under there by an animal? But we didn't have pets, and, thankfully, there were no issues with rodents or other critters. Maybe one of our kids fished them out of the trash and put them there? But Zoe was too young to get into the trash can. She could barely walk yet, and Nick, well, Nick could have done it. He was seven, but I still couldn't think of a motive. Over the following weeks, this happened several more times. Once it was in a dusty corner of the pantry, but both other times, it was the wardrobe again. I started getting increasingly curious, almost disturbed, by the occurrences. It was a part of my morning routine, before anyone else got up, to check under every piece of furniture 
and in the corner of every closet and pantry with a little pen light to check for shells from the previous morning without being interrupted. It had gotten more frequent. Pretty much every day, I was finding eggshells, almost always under the wardrobe, nestled near the baseboard of the wall, not too far from the radiator. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to just watch my husband as he threw away the eggshells from breakfast, since now that we'd moved across the city, my commute was twice as long and I had to leave before breakfast was ready. He'd still have some toast or oatmeal ready for me, though, while I did my hair and makeup. Finally, I decided to just confront him about it, since it was increasingly bothering me. Was this some sort of prank? A strange compulsion? Is this just his way of getting back at me for always complaining about the eggshells? Surely he knew that I knew, since I'd been cleaning them up every morning from under the wardrobe. When he got home from his job, inspecting shipping crates, one day, I gave him some time to relax, then strode into the bedroom with him and shut the door. We need to talk about the eggshells. He gave me a little smile and looked up at me. So you noticed? Of course I noticed. I described to him my annoyance and how, after the first few times, I didn't really find it funny that he left raw eggshells all over the house. In fact, I didn't find it funny the first few times either. I told him to knock it off and stop with the wardrobe thing. Under the wardrobe came his confused reply. I finally took the time to start throwing away my eggshells since I knew it had always bothered you when I left them in the tray. That's what I was talking about. What on earth are you talking about? I was speechless. So you haven't been leaving eggshells all over the house? Almost every morning, I've been finding them. Under the wardrobe mostly, but I found them in closets, in the pantry, in my bookshelf, in laundry piles, hell, even under the blankets of our bed. If this is some sort of prank, you've definitely gotten me good. His look of confusion was amplified. Who do you think? Could Nick be doing it? Or is this some sort of prank on me? It can't be Nick. He's too squeamish around raw eggs. I tried testing the waters to see if it was him. He wouldn't even bring me an uncracked egg when I was baking cupcakes. Nick has always been a germaphobe, so his unwillingness to touch raw eggs didn't strike me as an act. Are there any shells under there from this morning? I had never considered checking under the wardrobe in the evening, so I did. I dropped to my knees and peered under it, and nothing. What about the other places? Intrigued, I grabbed my pen light. I'd been finding something every morning for the last week, so, if there were any shells, I was sure I'd find them. I checked all the usual places, but nothing. I checked the kids' beds, the kitchen cabinets, and under the fridge. There was still no sign of eggshells. They must be being moved there overnight, I said, puzzled. I had never connected this to the eggshells, but 
I started noticing this odd skittering noise in the middle of the night. I would awaken, usually between midnight and 2 a.m., to a strange clicking, like claws on the hardwood floor. It would go away after a second, so I assumed it was the house settling, or maybe a ceiling fan downstairs rattling the floorboards. Rodents had been an early thought of mine, but a call to the previous tenants and a knock at my neighbor's doors confirmed nobody had ever had issues with mice, and we'd never noticed food going missing, holes being gnawed or droppings. I couldn't understand why mice would move eggshells around, but it was the most likely explanation I had, so I put out some humane cage traps with lures. One night, I woke up and heard the skittering again. This time, I grabbed my pen light and walked out into the kitchen. I shone it around, but the skittering faded off and stopped. On the way back to bed, on a whim, I peered under the wardrobe. At first, I thought I saw the shells again, but then I realized I was mistaken. They were uncracked, whole eggs. My curiosity turned to shock, then to revulsion as I realized they weren't ordinary eggs. They were larger, more rounded, slightly moist, and slightly translucent. I could even see dark blobs floating inside the eggs. It took all of my self-control to not scream in horror, but I jumped and slammed my head into a shelf in the open, per usual, wardrobe. It woke up my husband, who came to his senses instantly, jumped out of bed, and asked if I was okay. I held on to the part of my head that I'd hit, wincing in pain, but managed to gesture under the wardrobe with the pen light. After looking at my head to make sure it wasn't bleeding, he cautiously peered under the wardrobe with the flashlight. Oh my God, I heard him say. We whispered for a few minutes, unsure of what to do. We couldn't think of any animal that laid eggs like that. We knew we needed to get rid of them, but didn't know where to put them or how to pick them up. We certainly weren't going to touch them. I shuddered to think of all the times I'd touched those shells with my bare hands, once they'd mostly dried. My skin crawled as I realized whatever was hatching from those had done so possibly hundreds of times under that wardrobe. We settled on using a dinner plate and a spatula to gather up the eggs, then walked them downstairs and dumped them in the dewy grass. My husband had suggested throwing them off the balcony, but I didn't like the idea of killing whatever was growing in those eggs, despite not knowing what it was. What if they were something cute? They were not something cute. The next night was by far the most horrifying night of my life. I'm going to warn you up front. You might want to just stop here if you've experienced something similar long ago in your life, because you'd rather not know what it actually was. But here goes nothing. I felt a bit on edge ever since last night. I'd struggled to sleep at all, so I grabbed an iced coffee from the fridge and pulled an all-nighter, writing in my journal about what had been happening and how my life was going. 
As the sun rose, I started feeling a little silly and figured the eggs were something innocuous, though I still didn't have the slightest clue what. I went to work, albeit with a bad headache, and everything seemed fine. I didn't bring up the eggs with my co-workers, since they would probably think I was crazy or be grossed out and suggest something drastic. Like fire. Maybe I should have considered that route. That night, I checked the house for eggs, then went to sleep and was awoken by the usual skittering. This time, though, it was followed up by a muffled metallic clang and much more violent skittering. My heart skipped a beat. The trap must have caught some sort of animal in the house. I considered rousing my husband, but I figured I'd be brave. I took the penlight and peered cautiously around the door. The island counter blocked my view of the trap. As I carefully circumnavigated the counter, I caught a glimpse of the trap and screamed. It held a spider-like, gray, hairy creature about the size of a rat or a small dinner plate if you counted its legs. I dropped the light in shock, and it broke engulfing the room in darkness. I heard more skittering behind me and a hiss from the monster in the trap. My eyes were still adjusting to the darkness, but I could see movement out of the corner of my eye. I squared off with one of the creatures, which had its legs bent, as if it were about to leap straight at me. Looking around frantically, I realized my only remaining option was up. I grabbed the cord to the attic door and pulled. Something soft and light fell on my head and rolled off my back, but I grabbed the ladder and yanked it down, never taking my eyes off the spider thing, its eyes glowing in the faint moonlight. I scrambled up the ladder to the attic, and the last thing I remember is seeing hundreds, maybe thousands, of tiny pinpricks of light. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to meet us again and hear more stories like this. Thank you for listening to the story. Bye for now. If you like our story, subscribe English Practice Stories channel and click the bell icon.